What's up guys, so today I'm going to show you how I remove intake manifolds on 6 cylinder E36's and how I think is the best way to remove them and how to remove it in a way that allows you to easily reinstall the manifold as well as the tools I used and how to mark everything to make sure that nothing goes unplugged when you reinstall. This is my 1998 BMW M3 that I'm working on today. It has an M50 manifold and a cold air intake, but the principles of how I remove it and reinstall it is basically the same for M50s and M52 manifolds. So uh, let me pull the strap bar off and then we'll get started. The worst thing about removing these intake manifolds off the six cylinder E36s is the lack of space you have to work and to pull the manifold off, primarily being towards the back end of the engine where the wiring harness and the upper part of the body sort of get in the way. Now I'm going to show you guys how to remove that so you have a lot more room to work towards the back section of the motor allowing you to pull the intake manifold off a lot easier. Tools you are going to need. A sharpie. Duct tape. Needle nose pliers. Flathead screwdriver. Phillips head screwdriver. 3 8 ratchet. 3 8 ratchet extension. 10 millimeter socket. Preferred deep well. 11 millimeter socket. 13 millimeter socket. 14 millimeter socket. A flashlight. Tupperware to hold all your nuts and bolts. A pen and a notepad. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove these windshield wipers so we can remove the upper plastic housing and get to the underside where the wiring harness is. Using a 13 millimeter socket on a 3 8 drive ratchet right now. And these guys just sort of pop off if you wiggle them. So the next thing I'm going to remove are these little plastic screws right here. There are three on each side, one here, here, and here and three on the adjacent corner of the car. Um, you can use a flathead screwdriver to remove them, but these guys aren't in very tight. This one was already off. So I always use a little piece of tape where you drop all your nuts and bolts in there so you don't lose them or forget where you put them. So they're all sorted in one place and you know where they are. So now this main section up here, this plastic long piece is not connected to anything. You can sort of just pop it up, but do be careful because it sort of gets caught on the ends by the windows over here, up in the top corners. So we just gotta work it up slowly and carefully not to break it. There we go. So now as you can see, there are two little screws right there and right here that hold the wiring harness into this piece. So we're gonna undo those guys. Be careful not to drop the screws down inside the back end here. It's gonna be a pain to get out if you do. So now the wiring harness down here is away from this section right here. Then we gotta take him off. So as you can see, there's, there's a bolt right there. Holds that guy in. There's one on this side, and there's one kind of down underneath the harness. You can't really get a good shot of it, but if you just follow the section down, you'll see it. So for me, 930 seconds fit. It's a standard socket size, I'm sorry. It's not metric, so it's not the correct one, but these guys don't really do much work. They just sort of hold it in place, so they shouldn't be on too tight, so if you use the different size, it shouldn't matter. Just be careful with it. So I'm not too sure on the size of the bolts on those guys. One of them was 932, the other was 516. Um, just try different smaller sockets until one of them fits. They shouldn't be on too tight, so you should just be able to easily pop them off. So now this upper section is completely loose. And we just sort of pop that guy up like that. And look at that. So this guy can be moved a little bit. Don't pull on him too hard when you're moving around, but we have a lot more room to play down at the back end of the manifold now. Okay, so now we're gonna start removing the intake system. So this is not a stock intake, it's a cold air intake. The stock intake would have two bolts right here that you just undo, and I believe they're 10 millimeters. And then I always take the air box and the mass airflow sensor off as one. So you just unscrew that guy. Get a flat head right in here, pull them right off. So this is where we're gonna start labeling things as well. Um, the mass airflow sensor plug-in is right here and it's not the hardest sensor to lose but we're still gonna mark it anyway. So I'm just gonna write math. 
And so that's so you don't lose anything. So you start remembering. So I have my pen and note paper here. And we're just going to write math down. This way you'll have a complete list of everything you disconnected and you can check them off as you reinstall the manifold. Okay, so now we're going to start pulling the throttle body boots stuff off. Now, this one has traction control. Most of them don't. Some of them do. So that's just to be noted. If you don't have traction control, you just have a rubber boot that runs all the way to the throttle body and then you just unscrew that guy with a flathead. Now with this guy, you want to be careful pulling them off. This isn't just a rubber boot. It has underneath it the line to the idle control valve. So if you just rip that guy off, you might break something. In my case, because I did the M50 swap, I also have a sensor underneath here. So that's the sensor. I'm going to mark that guy. There we go. So I marked him as throttle body boot to know. And as you can see, I've already done this before from the several times that I've taken this off. Now this guy, you want to be careful because I don't know if you can see the hose down underneath there but that's to the idle control valve so you want to sort of slowly twist this guy up until he pops off so you don't damage him so to remove the traction control body if you have it there's a bolt here and a bolt back here right in there it's kind of hard to see but they are 10 millimeter bolts in my case the threads on the throttle housing here got stripped so I have to use this little nut bolt washer thing to hold it in place so that's just specifically for my car unless it strips out that's something you can do to fix it but they're just 10 millimeter bolts and just zip those guys right off so with this guy because he has so many things plugged in i'm just going to pop them off and just set them up to the side like that now removing the throttle body there are four bolt one on each corner they are 10 millimeter i would recommend using a deep well socket I have gotten short sockets stuck up inside these little sections here and it's a pain to get out. So with these throttle bodies, you'll have an upper plate and then the throttle body just like that. So I usually leave these guys just hanging in there if you don't want to lose these bolts. And another way is to take your bolts from your traction control housing, just slide them right back in so you know where all of them are. So the last thing I'm going to pull off is the dipstick bolt. The dipstick is bolted right to the intake manifold and it's the lower of those three bolts right there and that guy's a 10 millimeter. So just pull him right off. So we're going to start removing the fuel rail now. Fuel rail is very dangerous as they are full of fuel and you want to be extremely cautious not to spill any or minimize spilling. Now I always have a fire extinguisher on hand just in case something does happen. The best way to start removing it is to pierce the fuel system and get rid of all the fuel pressure and you will do that by pulling fuse 18 that blue guy right right there so you just pull that fuse and then crank the starter a few times try and start the motor it won't start obviously or it might start and die running off just the fuel that's left in there it will get rid of all fuel or majority of the fuel in the fuel rail and the injectors and depressurize the system now in my case i'm unable to do that because i'm pulling off the intake manifold to remove the starter so i'm gonna have to be extra careful and account for extra leaking of the fuel and just be more cautious because I can't start it up and pure the fuel system. So to start, I'm going to start by removing the crankcase ventilation hose. You basically just pinch in where it has these grooves and just sort of wiggle it back and forth until it pops off like that. I would mark this guy as end of fuel rail, pop him off and mark him and just sort of hang out. So this is a bypass valve for the secondary air pump. Um, OBD1 cars, so cars with M50s don't have have this so just unplug him mark him as secondary air pump and you can also mark that guy too down here just so you sort of remember how it all goes back together so these are plug-ins on the fuel rail for your o2 sensors on obd2 cars now if you get these mixed up plugging them back in you're gonna have some ugly problems i've seen misfires to lean codes so a good way to mark them you know like oxygen sensor but what i do is i'll put a zip tie on one of them on both ends so there's a zip tie here and a zip tie here so you just sort of know zip ties go with zip ties and so you don't get them switched sort of move these guys back around the valve cover up out of the way now at this point you can pull the wiring off for the fuel rail just sort of be very careful just pop it up slowly should come right off. So with the fuel injectors pop off these little black clips. I use needle those pliers and with a nice wiggle they come right off. Make sure to drop those in your bins too as they are very easy to lose. Now for removing the fuel rail itself, because I have an M50 swap, I have these adapter plates here, but the fuel rail is just unbolted by 
two 10 millimeter bolts, one right here and one right here. So just screw those guys right off. Now before I unscrew these, because fuel might leak out or probably will leak out, I always like to set some paper towels down in here by the injectors just so all the leaked fuel can be caught and minimize the mess. Just sort of wrap them underneath and try to get them around just like that. Now do be careful when you're popping these guys off, the injectors might not stay. So I sort of push down on the injector and up on the rail at the same time. Yeah, you can see where the fuel is leaking out. It won't be that bad if you purge your fuel system. I was unable to because I'm working on the starter and the starter doesn't work. Just sort of get up some of the fuel. So I've got a good majority of the fuel cleaned up. There is still some in there. I can see that it's sort of wet. So I'm going to let this sit and air dry out for a little bit before I continue working just to make sure that there's very little residual fuel still there. It evaporates relatively quickly, so it shouldn't take too long. Also, don't forget to write down the sensors that you disconnected just to make sure that you have it on paper and you can check it off as you plug them back in and reinstall the manifold. It's also good if you're not sure to take pictures of the sensors that you're removing. The more pictures the more references you'll be able to have when reinstalling these sort of things and it's always good to have as much information of what you did as possible. So I've let it air dry for a little bit we're going to start actually taking off the bolts that hold the manifold on. Now there are a 14 millimeter bolt way down there. If you sort of trace this guy right here I'll off of there. And there's this metal clip right here, this guy, and he runs all the way down. If you sort of trace him, you'll find out in the back towards the block where it is. It's 14 millimeter. I can't really get it on camera because it's so dark down there and kind of hard to find, but there is one down there. On E34s, on the M50 E34s, there is one here on the bottom of the engine block and there's one down here as well. E36s didn't come with a second one, I believe. M50s might have but just always to make sure to check that that guy is undone. If you're trying to work the manifold off and it is not coming off, I would start looking for that second guy. For removing this guy right here, this actually sat up in here. It's easiest to pull one of the lines off and then pull the other one off and then stick the lines right back on where it all went. I'll show you guys what the lines run from and where they run to. So if you do pull it off and don't remember what lines go where, I'll be able to show you guys. So this rear bolt back here is still gonna be a pain to get to even though we removed all housing back here. You can sort of move stuff out of the way. I find it easiest to go at it from the valve cover side of the intake manifold to give a little bit more room. Shit. So now I have the intake manifold completely unbolted. There's nothing holding it in. Keep in mind though, there is still things underneath it that are still attached to it. So don't just yank it out and just start ripping it out. I find it's best to sort of just shimmy it up back and forth. Also, as you're doing it, you can sort of get some nuts that you couldn't get out earlier if they got stuck between the threads and the manifold. So ideally, you want to get it off of the threads like that. And you can sort of get it up a little bit higher than that. And now you can start unplugging stuff from underneath. So one of the things that I unplugged when I was pulling it out is the crankcase ventilation return hose, which runs to the back, bottom of the oil pan now. Because mine is an M50, things look a little bit different under here. This is part of the conversion kit, the red hose there. You have a vacuum line right there. That sensor is part of the M50 manifold. I don't need that for the OBD2. But that sensor in the throttle body boot that I pulled off and said I had to put there because it was for the M50 swap is under here too. So you have a vacuum line. And you should mark him as a vacuum line. I have another vacuum line somewhere else. But the main one is this plug right here. This right here is the idle control valve and it's in the same spot as it is on an M52. So you wanna unplug that guy and mark him. Because if you lose him or swap him with another plug, your car won't idle. There's another vacuum line up under here, for my car at least, because it's M50 swapped. So I just mark it as a vacuum line. And now from here, the manifold can be removed. Keep in mind, some stuff still might get caught like that. The throttle body cable got caught on it. 
So just sort of be careful and be mindful of other things in the way when you're pulling this off. Not to tug or yank any wires and break something. So just as a last reminder, remember to mark everything with duct tape that you unplugged as well as where it was and also to write it down on a pen and paper and take pictures if you have to. All right, so that's it. The intake manifold is removed. Thank you guys so much for watching and best of luck with removing your intake manifolds and be sure to watch my intake manifold install video that will be coming out soon on how to reinstall your intake manifold. And just to make sure everything is all plugged in and how to vacuum test it for vacuum leaks and checking to make sure everything's plugged in correctly. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Keep it fresh.